Alright guys, so here I am again with another simple excited tutorial using Node.js and also MongoDB. I've created a very simple to-do list using these technologies. Let's see it's how it's looking. So here we have an input type that I can type a to-do. For example, I'm gonna type uh, pray the greatest. Uh, then you have to press on add button or just press enter and it just added beneath it here. So if you have uh, multiple to do's for example I'm gonna type uh, go to the shop and uh, just press enter and it just add it here and if you have more you just can type it here and it will keep adding those and beneath the form so if you want to delete one of these to do's for example I've done with this one and I want to delete it when I click on delete and it just delete it and if you want to delete this one just click on delete and it's delete that one too so let's create something like that but before doing that hit that subscribe button to my youtube channel so here i am inside visual studio code this is the code editor that i'm going to use and we have that folder to just show you how our project is looking like i'm going to delete that and also get rid of this terminal and i'm going to open up a new terminal so here we have to install the dependencies uh, that we are going to use for this project. So I'm going to say npm install, install, and uh, the first one is express uh, mongoose uh, ejs template. Um, the, uh, um, sorry, and uh, we have a body parser. So I'm going to say body parser, and I think that's all. And if I remember that I've used any other packages here, I'm gonna install those too. So, uh, till it's set up, because I have low connection, we're gonna set up other things that we need. So I'm gonna go here, I've already opened up a folder, and there we, I'm gonna use a MongoDB compass for interacting with MongoDB data, database, because I have low connection and I can uh, interact with MongoDB website well. That's the reason that I'm using MongoDB Compass. It's a tool that enables you to interact with MongoDB DB offline. So I'm gonna open this up. And uh, till it's open, we're gonna set up our express.js file. So here I'm gonna go inside the node uh, to-do list. And here we're gonna create our very first index.js file. And here we're gonna set up our express file. So I'm gonna say express uh, require, oh sorry, express require express and then i'm gonna access uh, body parser so i'm gonna say body uh, parser parser assign it to require body um, parser uh, then we have also mongoose so i'm gonna create another variable here call it mongoose Oh, I think that, that that didn't install well, so I'm gonna uh, run that one more time. Let me check if there is something wrong. Express, I type it well, mongoose, EJS, body parcel, all are fine. So I'm gonna press enter to install it again for me. So here I've already, uh, I've also accessed mongoose, so I'm gonna say require, uh, require, and we're gonna require mongoose, so I'm gonna say mongoose and i want to save this out and here i want to go inside mongodb compass and it's still loading till it's finished we're going to keep on writing codes here so and now we have these packages and now that it's installed here we have something uh, package.json so after uh, that our package.json or before that it doesn't matter we're going to create our patch package.json file so i just come here and say npm in it and you have to reply to some of the questions that mongodb asks you and here uh, you have to get rid of this space here because mongodb can't accept i mean the package name can be can have <coughs> sorry a space in itself so i'm gonna say node uh, to do and list and i'm gonna press enter for the rest of the, that and at the end yes so now we have here our package.json that has all the dependencies that we need maybe we're gonna need more i don't i don't remember which dependencies have i uh, have used uh, in this and um, but when we reach to different section we will understand why and when 
uh, to use those so here also in mongodb compass it's loaded and the only thing you have to do is to click on connect and it just redirect you to uh, the database that we have so it's just connecting and yes here we have the to do database so uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one because we don't need it and we're gonna create another one uh, to drop that you have to type to do uh, DB and drop that table so I just drop it so we're gonna create our um, database using mongoose so I'm gonna go inside our uh, file and package edition I'm gonna close this off and after that we have to set our very first express file so here I'm gonna come and create a variable call it app and assign it to uh, express and now we have to define routes using express so I'm gonna say app dot gate and we're gonna it's gonna redirect us to the home and here we gave access to two options which is uh, request and also response so uh, I'm gonna assign an arrow function here and add the response uh, we're gonna send something to the, the to the browser for example we're gonna say hello world then we have to listen to a port uh, to listen a port I'm gonna come here and define a variable and call it port and assign it to for example 3000 then we have to listen to the sport so I'm gonna say app dot listen and the port that we want to listen is the port which holds 3000 and then we get a callback function here again and in this callback function I'm just gonna console the lock and say uh, server is running on port and the port that we are going to use is 3000 you don't have to do this even you don't have to call this callback function I guess so but I'm just gonna do it like that and because I'm gonna use notemon to uh, we don't have to I mean uh, we didn't we don't have to type uh, every time uh, to get rank uh, I mean every time we start our code to get the changes on the browser so I'm gonna use notemon uh, to use notemon here I'm gonna come uh, before doing that we have to go inside the package JSON and find a scripts here and here we have a scripts and at the end of this I'm gonna type um, uh, start and we're gonna start our application using notemon and here after you set it up save it and make sure you save this out too and then I'm gonna come inside our terminal and type npm start notemon and it's gonna run our application when we should get this message at uh, the console I don't know what's the problem so I'm gonna uh, install it one more time npm uh, npm start start notemon press enter yeah I think that we didn't install that let me check and I go inside package.json and here we have independencies we didn't install that so <laughs> I can't here and install that so I'm gonna say npm and install and uh, what we are going to install is uh, what's this name um, notemon so till it's an install um, yeah it's an installing I shouldn't forget that um, so we should we should wait for all right guys so our package and assault and here I'm gonna start notemon so I'm gonna say npm start notemon and press enter and I'm just gonna start notemon for us and we should get that message here which is servers and running on port 3000 and you just have to put a space here so after you do, you've done that you have to go in a browser which I'm gonna go in Chrome and access port 3000 uh, which is localhost pre, uh, 3000 and here we get hello world that we've sent using the response object and send it to the browser yes so after this we don't want to get something like this we want to render an HTML file which is looking like previous one to do that uh, I'm just gonna come here and uh, here inside the node.js we're gonna create a folder call it we use make sure that it is plural so I'm gonna say we use and inside this we're gonna create our index dot 
e EGS file. So uh, as the template engine, we're gonna use EGS. So I'm gonna say index.ejs and press enter. And inside this, I'm gonna just type HTML5. And uh, at a place of the title, I'm gonna pass uh, to do list, uh, to do list. And inside it's in our HTML. For now, I'm just gonna type hello world or uh, from EJS. So I'm gonna save this out, but we cannot normally render this EJS file. We have to tell Notemon that we're gonna use EJS as our uh, view engine. To do that, uh, I just come beneath uh, the port. So here, I'm gonna uh, say app.set and we want to set up the view engine. So I'm gonna say view engine and uh, the view engine that we want to use is EJS. After this, after the, you've set up uh, your EJS file, it directly knows that to, to look up in views and uh, look for this uh, this files that we have here. But we have to tell also in a route to render that index.ejs file. So replace of sending that, we want to render that. So I'm going to say render and the file that we want to render is index. And you don't have to specify its uh, route because it just automatically knows that that file lives, lives inside the view. So I'm going to save this out and I'm going to go in a browser and refresh that out and here we go we get EGS so after that we uh, render this we want to have that form here so to have that form um, I'm just gonna come here and uh, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this each one so and here I'm gonna define a container and inside the container uh, I'm gonna put an each one and say for example um, to do list. So I'm going to say to do list. Then after this each one, I'm going to define a form which its action going to be to whom route. Then uh, it's going to have a method of post. So I'm just going to say post. So after that, inside this form, and I'm going to also set this autocomplete to off because uh, it shows my email and I don't want you anybody see that. So after that, I'm gonna define an input tag here. So I'm gonna say input, input type here. And it's type gonna be text, but it's gonna have a placeholder. So I'm gonna say placeholder, and the placeholder name gonna be add uh, to do's uh, with uh, three dots. And uh, then I'm gonna give it a name because we want to access, give access to this input type using the name property. And it's name gonna be to do value and then I'm gonna require this. So I'm gonna say require. Then after that, we have to have a button to submit this. So I'm gonna say button and it's type gonna be submit. So here I just come and type, type and it's type gonna be submit. And inside it's senior HTML, I'm just gonna pass at. Now we have this form and uh, so I'm gonna save this out and check how it's looking. I'm gonna refresh and uh, we get no changes. I'm gonna refresh this out because if you don't refresh your, <coughs> uh, if, if you just save uh, your file, your index.gjs, it just refresh Nodemon here and you can get the changes here. You see that it's looking like this, but we also need the styling here. So to set up the styling here, uh, I'm gonna come here and we have to tell uh, node.js or express to use this public folder and use this CSS file as our uh, static files. So to do that, uh, before or after set, it doesn't matter. But here after the set, I'm just gonna come here and say after use. And what do we want to use? We want to use um, uh, we want to use uh, public as our static folder. So I'm, uh, here we have a Express gives us an uh, a method here which is a static and that enable us to serve a static file and our static file locate in public so i'm just gonna say public the folder name is public by just setting that you told um you told um ejs to use public folder for rendering a static files which is here a css file you can have javascript and also images here so 
after that uh, i'm gonna set also um body parser to uh, can get the values from the form uh, so uh, before doing that we have to access that that we've already done that i mean I require it and after we have required i'm gonna come here and say app.use and we want to use um we want to use body parcel to your uh, to encode our url so i'm gonna say body uh, parcel dot uh, url encoded and here i'm just gonna type here it gets an object i don't have to do this but i'm gonna just do that and extend it to true then i'm gonna duplicate this out one more time and i'm gonna get right of this one and we want to have access to json too so i'm gonna say json and don't worry about this line that it gets here it just work and i don't know i have no idea why why it gets that i, I think that there is a new update on node.js i don't know but it's still it's working so after this we have to get the data from the form which is in the uh, which is inside the index.ejs and also i forgot to uh, add our uh, static file here so i'm gonna go inside index.ejs and as normal just come here and type link and link up our uh, static files which is inside the css folder and its name is style.css you don't have to define we uh, define public because we already told that to use um where is it mm -hmm. uh, to use public folder which is this one as our static file and it directly knows that we're going to use a uh, public folder and from the power folder inside the css folder we have a file name called style.css which has all the styles that we have here so i'm going to save this out and refresh it and you will see that our form is looking like this and our style is looking like this you can install it by yourself if you want so uh, you can you, you should sell something even better than this one so now we want to get the value from this input type and add it to our mongodb database so i also set up a mongodb the only thing we have to do is to create a database but i'm i'm not gonna do it using mongodb compass i'm gonna do it using mongoose so here uh, i just come and create a connection with our uh, database so i'm gonna define a variable call it db url and yes it's fine uh, url and assign it to the url that we want to use as mongo uh, db uh, colon forward slash forward slash local host and uh, the port that we want to use is 27017 and uh, here you also need to define your database name so for example i'm going to define it as to do db now i save this out nothing going to happen but we have to connect with our database so i'm going to say uh, mongoose we have already accessed mongoose and there we have a method called connect and it takes two parameters the first parameter is db url and the second one is that you don't have to type this out but if you don't you will get some uh, warning in a console which is annoying for me so i'm just gonna uh, type that out so it is an object and i'm gonna say uh, use new url parser uh, to true and also use unified uh, did I type unified uh, topology topology as true yeah so now you'll not get any error there so I'm gonna save this out and we have to refresh our database but I'm not I have no idea where I can refresh this out so here we had that uh, button and uh, it didn't create any database for us so after we defined that where we wanted to uh, def uh, where we want to store or in which database we want to uh, store our data it will uh, just uh, normally create a database by this uh, i mean create a collection by the by this database name so after that i forgot to do one more thing which is uh, starting mongodb in my computer to do that i have I, I used to use cmd here so i'm gonna say cmd and we have to type 
uh, MongoD and I just start MongoD, MongoDB here and you can interact with MongoDB database. So if you get a message like this, it means that your database is running and make sure that you do not close this uh, if you are open up a separate CMD uh, like me. So now we have to create a database. So to create a database, uh, I'm gonna go here and create an, a new file, a new folder, which its name is models. Usually we create our database inside the models. And inside the models, uh, I'm gonna go and create another file here, which I'm gonna call this as uh, note, I mean todo.js. And inside this, the first thing that we want to do is to require mongoose, so I'm gonna say, um, mongoose require mongoose uh, then are we are we going to use uh, a schema here i'm going to create a schema here so i'm going to say a schema with capital letter and uh, mongoose dot schema so then we're going to use uh, we're going to create a blueprint something like blueprint for our database so to do that i'm going to define another variable and call it to do schema People do it like that, but you don't have to, you don't have to call it whatever you want and assign it to the new schema. And our schema takes a parameter, which is an object. So inside the object, uh, we define the way uh, to form or store data in our database. So I'm gonna uh, add, as a first property uh, here, I'm gonna pass to do. And inside this, it also takes an object. Uh, if you have only one definition for this you can just pass one value here but if you have multiple just uh, type it inside a curly bracket so here uh, we have to define itself the way I mean the type of the data that gonna store inside the to-do collection so it's type gonna be a string so I'm just gonna say a string and also it's required so I'm gonna say required and it is true yes so after we've set up our blueprint, I mean the blueprint for the database, you have to export it. So our database is really simple. The only thing that is stored is just a to-do value. So after that, we have to say that it is a model and use this as a blueprint for our database. So I'm gonna define another variable here, I call it to-do and assign it to uh, mongoose, uh, mongoose. And from there, we have access to a uh, uh, method called model and this one takes two parameters the first one is uh, the collection name which here I'm gonna call it to do and you make sure that you call it uh, the singular of the database or the collection that you want to create and by default when you type this uh, here singular and MongoDB database it polarize it and create a clear collection of polarized value that you just passed here. So as a second parameter, we have to define the schema. So I'm gonna say to do a schema. Then we have to export this out. So to export it, we're gonna use module.exports and what do we want to export is to do. Now we have to use this to do in our index.js to add something to that database. So here I'm just gonna come and create another variable and I'm gonna call this as a to do uh, with capital letter and assign it to require. And our file lives inside the models. I mean, um, where we do have that. We have that inside the models. So I'm gonna say models. And there we have a file called to do to do js which we do not have to pass its extension so after that we want to post something to the schema or the database that we've created so to do that i'm gonna create a post route here so i'm gonna say post and it's gonna be in a home and it gives us access to request and a response object here so i'm gonna say response and here we're gonna assign an arrow function and we want to add something to our uh, database. So 
to do that I'm gonna create a variable here call it to do and assign it to new to do the database or the blueprint that we've created before and as normal uh, put an object or the way that you want to store data in your database put that here inside that object the way that we want to put that is just only one to do so here uh, I just scam and say to do and as our to do before doing that let me show you one thing um, yeah so whenever we here in the form and the EJS I set its uh, method to post and it's autocomplete and it's a redirect as to the home page so here we have access uh, the home page uh, the data and it's gonna be sent to us using post method and we can have we can access the data that come from this input type using this name property that we have here so to do that here I just come and uh, our property name here is a to do uh, like uh, this one here we have to do and we have to pass a value for it for now I'm gonna pass something like uh, testing then um, uh, we have to save, the, uh, save this out in the database so I'm gonna say to do dot save it's a method and it is uh, asynchronous we can tack on the dot then method and uh, it gives us access to the result um, result prop uh, result object and I'm gonna assign an R function here and as the response we're gonna redirect the user to home again so I'm gonna say response dot redirect to home page now I save this out and our um, file crashed I don't know why I'm gonna save this out one more time but it's still it's crashed so let's see what's the problem here Okay guys, uh, I found out the problem here that uh, replace of putting a colon here, I put a, an a assignment, you know that while assigning value to a key value pairs, you don't have to put a, a, an equal sign there. So here I'm gonna put a colon here, I'm save this out. And after I save it, I'm gonna go in the browser and here I'm gonna refresh this out one more time. And here we go, we get something here. So after that you've submit this form, uh, which I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna click on this. Uh, here we have to pass something and add it. And now if you take a look in our database, which is MongoDB Compass, and I'm gonna refresh it one more time. And here we get our DB, to do DB that we've created or connect to using this line of code here. I told you that when we uh, add, add what, when we add the data to this database, it's just gonna create it for us. And there it polarizes it and create a collection by the name of to do's that here we have testing with this ID that we're gonna use later yes so now we want to take a uh, data dynamically not just putting by ourselves here uh, just testing so we want to get the data from this input type from here and add it to our database to access the value from this input type uh, you just have to come here and uh, a type where is it here mm, and a testing uh, we, we have access to that uh, using uh, let me check if I set body parser to uh, yes I require body parser so I can use it so I say uh, using the request object we have access to the body and from the body the property or the input type that we want to access is this one which has the name of to do value so I'm just gonna copy this out from here I'm gonna go here and paste it down here so now if I save it and go to our browser it refresh it one more time and here I'm gonna type something for example I'm gonna say hello I am the first data now press enter and take a look in our database here I'm gonna refresh it refresh and there we go we get this one so and now our next step is to show up these data in our uh, you know in in, 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 in the index.egs file I mean here right here so to do that um, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna use the get method here so in the get method we have already our uh, database which our database called to do that we've required that here and from this uh, 
from this database we have access to a method called find and this find method gonna find all the data that we have in our database then it's a asynchronous function it's gonna take a few times so i can tack on that then method and it gives us access to all the results so then i'm gonna call a callback function here and i'm gonna render uh, again render uh, what we want to render before doing that we have to say response dot render and uh, what do we want to render again is index dot EGS that we don't have to type its extension but with that we want to send a data that we get from the database using the find method so to do that here I just uh, define an object here and I'm gonna give it a name of data and with data we want to send the result so I'm just gonna say result result is all the values that we get from the database let me console.log that to to you guys can see what's really going on so i'm going to say console.log and say result and i'm going to save this out and now if you take a look in the browser i'm going to refresh this out and if you take a look in a in a console here we get access to all of those database i mean those data that we have uh, saved in our database which is this one testing and hello i'm the first data so now our duty or our mission is to print those out in index.html file or index.ags to do that we're gonna come here after this form and here we have to write a little javascript so to use a javascript inside uh, egs file you have to t do something like this and inside this um let me close this off and inside this we can write our javascript so the javascript that i want to write here is an if statement and remember we have access to the data and we have sent the data using uh, this object here which it, uh, the data holds the result which are all the data that we get from the database uh, so uh, here i'm going to type an if statement and say if data if data exists what do we want to do next so I'm gonna open up here and uh, also make sure that it's rounded by this one to its understand it's an, a JavaScript and also put this here. So after this here, we're gonna loop through over all these data and print it out on the database. So again, I have to type uh, like this again and say, uh, data look through over the data which I'm going to use for, for each here and it gives us access to each individual to do value so I'm going to say to do value and now we can uh, assign it to an arrow function like we do in JavaScript so here uh, again we have to close this so I'm going to copy this out from here and paste it down here and inside this we can define our JavaScript I mean uh, our HTML or yes our HTML so here I also pass that here and it just realized that it is JavaScript so inside this for example I'm gonna pass each one and you will see that there is no problem I'm gonna pass hello and refresh it we get two times hello because we loop through over all of them we have to data and I'm gonna some a specific uh, I'm gonna define some a specific element here attack here to define those so i'm going to define a div here with a class name of to do uh, container and inside this i'm going to define another very another div here and give it a class of to do value and inside this we're going to show up our database uh, i mean our uh, the the value that we've get from the database so to do that here i'm going to pass that again these things i don't know what is it what it called <laughs> So paste it down here and to print the data you also have to use this equal sign here and inside this we have access to each individual data so I'm just going to copy this out from here and from there what do we want to get from the database is the to do collection so I just say to do now we also have to close this off to close it we're gonna do something like this now I'm gonna save this out and take a look in the browser refresh it there we go we get the testing and also hello I'm the first data
that we've added before. And also we have to put the delete button here. So to do that, uh, after this div, I'm gonna come and define another div and inside div, I'm gonna define an anchor tag and put a class to it, which is a to do uh, delete. So, and then uh, inside the to do delete, what do we want to do? I'm gonna get rid of this each one, I don't need it. And the inside it's in a rich email and we're just gonna pass delete. I save this out and refresh it. And there we go. We have we get these patterns too. So now we've successfully add our data in the database and also print them out in our HTML file. Our next mission is to whenever we click in this delete button, we should delete these. To do that. Let me first uh, do something here. Um, uh, to delete the, uh, to do delete a data from the database, uh, we're gonna use a method there called uh, find by ID and delete it. So to do that here, I just come inside our index.ejs after the get and post method at the bottom of these. I'm gonna define another method here. So. Our method is gonna be app dot delete, and it's gonna be to the home di uh, home section. But it gives us access to the ID that we're gonna send using our front end, and it also gives us access to the response, response, and actually the first one is request, and the response object. Oh, what's that? Restart Visual Studio Code Shop. Yeah. So then, oh, it adds something at the top of our database. We don't want something like this. So I'm gonna get right of it. So here we have access to the response and request. Then I'm gonna assign an arrow function to it. I'm gonna use an arrow function here. And what do we want to do? We want to access the to do, which is with which is start with capital letter. And from the database, we want to find by ID and delete it. And the ID, uh, we will add, we will send the ID using our front end. So to give access to uh, that, we're going to use a request dot prams and dot id we want to access the id and after that it found that it gonna take a few times so we can tack on the dot done method and uh, using the dot done, dot done method uh, we get access to the result which i'm not gonna do anything with result just uh, console.log the result so i'm gonna say console.log and the result so now we have to uh, send the id from the database, from here, from the front end to our database to uh, realize which one do we want to exactly delete. To do that, um, so um, to do that, let me show you here something in index.ejs. We also can print out something, uh, we also can get the ID. So I'm gonna copy this out here and paste it down here and replace off uh, rendering or showing to do value, we can access its ID normally. So if I come here, you will see that we have ID here. Now we want to find a way to send these data uh, to our backend. So to do that, we're going to use fetch API. But before doing that, well, we, we have to find a place to pass these, this ID to a sender that. And the, uh, the, the perfect place to Render that, that is this anchor tag that I've done a really crazy thing here. Uh, I saw some of the programmers use data set uh, property or attribute to pass dynamic data there, but I've used a class which is really crazy and I, I know that it's stupid, but I just used that. So I'm gonna paste this out and it isn't matter that it's uh, wrapped using a quote, it, it still works and it's realized that it is a JavaScript. So, we want to whenever we click on this delete button, uh, it's sent uh, to the 
add send that request to our backend. So to do that, here I'm gonna define our script and send an Ajax, Ajax request. So I, get, I say a script and inside this, I'm gonna define a variable, call it delete button, uh, delete button and assign it to document dot query selector which is selector all and we want to access all the to do delete button then here i'm going to look through over all of these and add an even listener to it so i'm going to say delete button delete button dot add actually for each and uh, uh, for each gives us access to each individual button and also its index. I don't know if I can use its index, but I'm just gonna pass it here because maybe later we're gonna need it. And now we can add a, we can add an even listener to each individual button. So I'm gonna say button dot add even listener. And the even listener that we want to listen to is click even. Then we also can again uh, call a callback function here. I mean an arrow function here. And using this arrow function, we're gonna access the uh, the the we want to send that data and we have to access that data. To access that data, uh, I'm gonna define a variable here. Call it call it endpoint and assign it to. Um, oh, we're gonna use backtick. So backtick here, and we want to send this to forward slash and that ID. So I'm gonna use dollar sign here and open up and close curly brackets and from the button which is this button here right here we want to access its class list so i'm going to say class list and for now just i'm going to save this out and console.log to we can see what's really going on so i'm going to say console.log and i'm going to console.log the endpoint save this out and make sure that your index.gjs i mean index.js also refresh because we want to get the changes in front and front end too. So now I'm gonna go inside our website and refresh this out one more time, but I'm gonna open up console here. Come on baby, faster, yes. Here we have console and if I click on one of these delete button, we should get that ID. So I'm gonna click on, yes. We get that class, which is to do delete, but we also get access to that uh to that id so we only we don't want to get the first class name here but we only want to get the second one to do that here uh, i just come and replace of class name a class name first we don't want the first one we don't we want the second one and i'm just gonna pass one here because you know uh, indexes start from zero so i'm gonna save this out and one more time refresh it and click on delete button there we go we only get that id and now we have access that id here and told uh, to everything pass after that which is an id gate that and that is an id that is specific id and that normally deleted so uh, now we have to send our request uh, to the backend so <clears throat> after that we've accessed uh, or get access to that uh, id what do we want to say is to use fetch api so i'm going to say fetch and it needs an endpoint so i say endpoint and as a second parameter there it gets an object we define its method which uh, we're going to use a uh, delete method here so i just say delete then uh, what do we want to do if i save it and uh, take a look again in the browser we sent our request to the backend and it sent a request to the endpoint which is forward slash the uh, colon id and we've accessed that id here and now it will delete it for us so if i go here and i'm going to refresh this out and i'm going to save this out also refresh it to get all the changes here yeah there is something wrong Mm hmm so save this out one more time refresh it yes everything is fine so now if i click on this delete button click on nothing happened why nothing happened it deleted but because our web page is not refreshed we do not get the changes 
So if I refresh my web page here, you will see that we delete one of them successfully. And if I click on this one, we also delete that one, but we don't want all the time to uh, we refresh and see if it's delete or not. We want to, uh, whenever we delete it, it's just delete. So to do that here, we can go in our uh, to-do, I mean, index.ejs. And at the end of this, uh, we want to every time we delete an item from there, refresh our window. So I'm gonna say window, uh, I mean, refresh our website. So I'm gonna say uh, window dot location and uh, from there it gives us an property access to the property of href which we want to whenever we click on this button it just redirect us again to the home page so uh, i'm gonna save this out one more time and save this also and refresh this also so it's refreshing uh-huh yes now i'm gonna add a to do here for example um, go to shopping press enter yes it add and i'm gonna add one more uh by a phone add yes it also add and now we want to delete this one for example go to shop delete yes it deleted successfully so this was from our tutorial and uh, it's a long time that i haven't used node.js and that's the reason that uh, explain something word but i hope that you guys learned something uh see you in the next tutorial love you guys bye